Hi everyone, I'm Amy Clark with the SeniorList.com and today I have a guest um, from a global home care company, Comfort Keepers, um, Chris Tepe. Did I get it right? Close. Very close. Very close. Yes. Uh, Chris is um, operations for Comfort Keepers, and he is here today with me to talk about um, seniors and navigating this new world of COVID and uh, a global pandemic, and and really what um, what new information has come out about how seniors can best. Um, not only stay entertained in their new world of confinement uh, for the most part, but also any additional resources that have come out um, in the last month or two with, or, or even beyond that, actually there might be resources out there that Chris knows about that we, you know, that aren't necessarily super new, but new enough that they um, need to be discussed. So anyways, uh, thank you, Chris, for joining us. Uh, much appreciated. We, we look forward to your insight and, and, and knowledge. Thank you for having me. This is very, very exciting. Absolutely. Um, so my first question is what, for, for, for those of us, and, and I know many others out there who have been either quarantined or doing their own self-isolation at home, uh, I imagine people are starting to get a little bored. Um, so my first question for you is, is, do you have any suggestions for older adults who are staying at home, who have done all the really exciting cooking and new crafts and the things that we all did in the beginning when this was a bit right. new and novel? Um, do you have any ideas for people who are really starting to feel the weight of, of being isolated and are really, you know, having a hard time coming up with things to do. Sure. I, you know, Amy, I think that senior isolation is always a problem. Um, and, and today, even more than ever, I think that, uh, you know, we, we, we see clients and seniors who already couldn't leave their home and seem perfectly fine. But now with the forced inability of their families to come visit, everything's changed, you know? So I think one of the, you know, we, we even have a list of 99 things you can do with a senior that we provide to our caregivers pre COVID. Mm. Um, so we, all those fun things come into play, but it's like you said, you know, what do you do once, you know, you've, you've reorganized every closet and, and every drawer is now clean and you've donated everything that you should. And I think that, um, you know, some of the, the, the neat things, you know, like crafting or gardening, you know, those things can't stop. You know, if you used to garden and now you're in a different space where you don't have the real estate to garden, you know, create an indoor herb garden, garden, you know, in a pot, do something like that. I think the other thing, you know, a lot of our seniors were very, very involved in volunteering and doing things in their community, um, even visiting other seniors in facilities and things like that. So we've had some really neat idea sharing and we've had our own caregivers organize parades mm. past some of those facilities. They got, you know, in one, I, I can, the story is that they even got the fire department to bring the fire trucks by and, you know, the seniors are waving out the window, but it's just that break um, and, and the experiences so people can talk about them. Um, you know, one of the other really neat things that's available is just all these virtual ideas, right? So for me, you know, one of the biggest things that I wanted to do was make sure that my parents were in, introduced to Zoom so yeah. that they could navigate this world. And, you know, luckily for me in their late 80s, mid 80s, they, they are able to do that. Um, so you know, we actually, I had no idea how my parents had met. And so on the last family Zoom call, we asked them to talk about that. And it was terrific to go back because I think in, in pre-COVID, we were all too busy, right? And today, now we can take that time. So, you know, for, for the resources, you know, so much is online. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the neatest things that I think you can do is one, really narrate or get your, you know, your seniors to narrate parts of their lives that you haven't had the time or, or had the inclination to talk about. Second, second is, you know, you can go anywhere in the world today virtually. Mm -hmm. So think about all the places that they wanted to go or thought about going 
and never went and take them there, you know? So they may not be able to do it, but on a Zoom call, you could share your screen and really take them someplace that they'd always wanted to see. Um, I think, you know, uh, you know, you even said it, you know, write recipes, share recipes, you know, reorganize your closet. All those things are really, you know, the typical we've run out of novel ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and I think next it's how do we get out of the house without being out of the house? Yeah. So we've seen some amazing ideas come from our own caregivers, you know, out in the field. And then, of course, you know, having the access to go, you know, virtually anywhere and do anything is just such a, a neat, a neat new way of traveling. Absolutely. And I, I really like the idea of, um, of the Zoom call with your parents or grandparents and, and talking about memories and being able to record that. I mean, what an amazing gift for children and grandchildren and great grandchildren that, you know, if there's a silver lining to any of this, that maybe more of that comes out, more conversation, more lengthy conversations, because right. now we have time to do that. Right. Yeah. Right. I attention because we are thinking about all the things that we haven't done. <laughs> but, and, and I think, you know, it's, it, we, we visit family or mm -hmm. our, our loved ones and our seniors, and we talk about things that might not matter, so to speak. You know, it's like, how's the job? Oh, this happened. And, you know, we, we gripe and share, but we really don't dig deeper. And I think to your point, you know, this, this has given us the chance to really spend more quality time talking about things um, and share a little deeper. Um, you, you know, it's just, it's, you know, in going on with the virtual thing, you know, why can't, as our seniors learn to do this, how do we help connect them with each other? You know, so even, you know, virtual lunches, virtual tea parties, whatever we can do to continue to, to bring the connectivity and the human touch, even though it's, it looks like this today, right? It, you know, it, we're all missing it. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is slightly off topic, but I just this morning saw this great video of a woman who set up um, for Mother's Day. Her mother must have lived nearby because they were both in the same yard, but she had set up this plastic barrier between the two of them. And then she had put sleeves in the plastic so that she could give her mom a hug. Um, oh, wow. You know, just th th that came up because of what you said about, you know, we're all really missing that, that physical one-on-one -on -one touch right. and be able to see each other. So that was just another, you know, very inspirational way that somebody has figured out <laughs> how to hug their mother, you know, even through, through plastic. So through all this, that's right. Yeah. It's a great, great story. Thank yeah. you. It's very touching. Um, let's uh, switch gears a, a little bit to, to food. Um, mm -hmm. We have done some research on our own about meal delivery services and, you know, some creative ways that seniors can, can access food, especially if they're, doing everything they can to stay at home and not, you know, go out into the world and be exposed, especially at a grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, so are, are there meal or food delivery services that, that may not be top of mind for people that may be a, bit, a little bit unusual or different, um, not widely known about? Sure. I, you know, I think all, all of, it goes from pure raw food all the way to pro, fully prepared meals. So I think one of the things that this has caused and, and, you know, we, we talk about what other options are out there. Most of the restaurants went to delivery only. Well, almost all of them. Um, so it was either pickup or delivery. And at first it was just pickup and now many, many of them deliver. So I think it goes back to, um, you know, how do we feel as normal as we can? And the answer is, don't be afraid to call your local restaurant that you always went to and ask the question. Yeah. Right? The, the worst thing that they can say is we don't deliver, um, but we can put it in an Uber or we can put it in a cab or we can, you know, Uber Eats is picking up here. So I think from the fully prepared, making us feel like we're, you know, more normal and life is going to be going back to normal soon. Um, we can do that. 
from a standpoint of you know just pure groceries, almost every major grocery chain is delivering now, mm -hmm. um, and they will set it on your porch, so there is no interaction. Um, you know, and then even on the internet, it talks about how do you safely get that in and what should you do after you get it and wash all your fruit, even the banana that's in a peel, wash it anyway, you know, so all those things are, are just more about how do we keep people, you know, safe. And yet, you know, nutrition is such a big piece of people feeling good and not feeling sad or, you know, the whole world's changed. Yes, it has. You know, but even when we think about in our seniors' lifetimes, the world's changed many, many times. Mm. This is just dramatic for all of us. Yeah. So, you know, I think that um, using the Uber Eats, using Home Chef to get the raw ingredients and the meals prepared, you know, or the meal that you get to prepare, but you don't have to think about all the ingredients. They just come to you in one set. Mm -hmm. um, none of those have really slowed down. You know, through all of this, they are seeming to be able to get the groceries and get the packages out. So that part's really neat because you can either be surprised by what you're about to have for dinner tonight, or you can go online and decide what you're going to have for dinner. But it, it allows you to stretch out into different, you know, whether it's, you know, different ethnicities of dinners that you'd like to create or just things you haven't had in a while. I think the key is really making sure that that our seniors are aware and are using um, the opportunities out there that are there. As like you said, as opposed to, well, every Monday I go shop for the week. Every Monday you used to go shop for the week. Now every Monday you go online and you order it, and it's delivered on Tuesday. You know, and and it's just really changing that mindset and enabling them with the technology. And you know, we we are finding in our own company that, that that fear that was there two years ago by many of our seniors isn't really a fear at all. It was just a, a, a lack of understanding of how to use it. Not afraid of the internet. They just weren't sure how to use it. So once we realized that, we stopped not introducing it and not teaching them how and, and helping them gather all that data they can, they can gather. Yeah, and to that point, um, in one of the research studies we did recently, we found that um, older adults were actually embracing technology at much faster rates. Yes. Um, and, you know, there's this, I think, a very false idea out there that seniors are not tech savvy, but in fact, I think they, they really are. And now we're giving them the chance to really show it off. Absolutely. And, and, you know, my, my parents have always had better phones than I have. They don't quite know how to use them the way I can, but it's amazing. My mom just got a new Samsung and you think, what are you doing? And then she started showing me some of the apps that she downloaded mm. because they're interesting to her. So that's, that's, you're, you're dead on with that. I think that's really inspirational to me to watch the seniors figure it out very quickly yeah. and embrace it very, very quickly. Absolutely. So, and again, as you mentioned, um, for people who are not tech savvy or not comfortable or don't have a smartphone, you can always pick up the phone and whatever phone, um, yeah. and call your restaurant, your local grocery store. There are so many people out there that are willing to help right now. Right. And, and, you know, you and I have both heard countless stories about people going above and beyond for seniors and, and people who, um, who are compromised in some way and, and don't want to be exposed to this virus. So um, right. it, it, there's possibilities that, that are endless, regardless of the technology that people are using. It's so true. And, and I think, uh, you know, just neighbors, everybody yeah. is just begging to help others. Yeah. Local churches have put on amazing food drives and things like that. You know, it's it's this this question of, you know, nobody likes to ask for help because we're all independent. Mm -hmm. um, and yet there are people begging to help. So mm -hmm. for me, you know, it, you can't you can't not reach out because it really feeds somebody else to help someone. So I think of, you know, some of the seniors that are hesitant to ask for help. But think about how many people they've helped in their lives and how many how much that fed their soul. Mm -hmm. reach out and help somebody connect um, to you and, and, and get the things you need, whether, and, you know, they can go to farmer's markets and all those other things that we don't traditionally think about 
that are closed. Well, the farmers markets are figuring out how to come closer to us. Um, and so, you know, really, I, I, you know, going back to, um, going back into the whole situation of how do you ask for help it, it, to your point, pick up any communication device and ask. Um, and, you know, there are so many home care companies out there too, that don't necessarily, you know, just want to provide care. Sometimes it's just call and ask them the question, Hey, do you know anybody doing this? We have caregivers today that will run and get groceries for free for anybody and help provide that. So, you know, if you're in a situation where they can't deliver, pick up the phone and call a home care agency and say, Hey, can you help me? And the answer is absolutely. So that's great. And I think that um, that brings up uh, a topic, an issue that I've talked with other people about um, that you mentioned home care isn't just about, you know, providing personal care in the home. There's, there's other things that home care professionals do. Um, maybe you could touch on that for just a moment. Sure. I, you know, when we think, I think everything gets to change again. Like, you know, what, with, with this, we start to rethink about how, what that means and home care, to your point, did mean that you couldn't care for yourself. And, and today that's not, accurate at all. It really is about um, keeping people safe and healthy and healthy in every way, physically, spiritually, mentally, and sometimes it's company. And sometimes it's somebody that can enable them to do something that they used to do that brought them great joy. So they used to knit and now arthritis doesn't let them do that. But a caregiver can come in and knit with them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and you know, I could tell you great stories that we hear all the time from the field of of caregivers discovering something that the senior just assumed was gone forever, and able to bring it back to them. So, you know, it's it's it goes back to that feeling of, you know, nobody nobody wants to lose their independence, but that's not what home care means. Home care means retaining your independence. You know, and, and there are things that every one of us can't do that we could do when we were 19 mm. or 20 or 25 or, you know, if I keep going, I'll date myself. But, you know, I would love to do those things, but I can't anymore. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that I'm, I can't ever again with someone else, through someone else. So, you know, we, we live vicariously through our kids and through our grandchildren, through our great-grandchildren. Well, let, you know, let's let them and other agencies, to your point, bring some of that back to life. Let us, you know, really elevate your spirit by doing things that you thought you couldn't do. What are the daily doses of joy that we can bring every single day with you, whether it's just sharing a great belly laugh about a story that you remember or, you know, going on a trip together with somebody or just having somebody's, you know, gloved hand to hold at this point, you know, but it's just, you know, we just have to continue to say, how do we enable everyone to share the joy um, that, that, you know, being alive brings. Yeah. And, you know, as we age, it doesn't change what we want. You know, we want hope, we want love, we want connection. And, you know, I, I do look at the seniors that are very active and do a volunteer in the community, unable to do that, figure it out with your church, figure it out with your community. How can I do this? You know, and, and I've seen so many people sewing masks and just doing all these wonderful things for people from the safety of their home, put them on the porch, somebody picks them up, they get to where they need to be. It's a great feeling of volunteerism, which again, keeps us all feeling alive and connected. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a great reminder that there, there's so many you know, again, silver linings um, happening, but there are so many people that are out there helping others, regardless of their age. Yeah. Sure. Um, tell me a little bit about um, resources, um, programs. You know, there's a lot of information out there about, you know, a lot, you know, different resources and programs. Um, are there any, is there anything that seniors or their families need to be aware of that might be available in their local community? 
you know, when it's really great because we do talk about the positives of today. Um, we've seen so many organizations pivot um, to being a place where people had to come to, to a, a, you know, a, a company that can give and get to you. Mm -hmm. um, so that part's really neat. I think the, the most important thing is to um, look, right? Do research and dig into your community, whether it's through Google, whether it's through a neighbor, whether it's, you know, it's whatever, you know, whatever lifeline you have, reach for it and, and ask the questions. Um, you know, we, we, we don't want anybody anywhere to feel alone. You know, this is, this is very difficult for everyone. Um, you know, even, you know, there are people that are in a room that that's where they have to stay waiting for somebody to come deliver something, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it's really about continuing to um, look at all the programs that are developing. And then, you know, I, I even look at what the SBA has done and the government has done with the SBA loan. It's enabled restaurants to pivot into a delivery position. Right where they were a sit-down only, very formal, you know, event type restaurant where you would go on your anniversary, they can now deliver it to you, cooked or uncooked. So you know we've seen some really neat thought come up um, on 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 how do we, you know, keep the community alive and not just from a business standpoint, but how do we get to those folks? Um, you know, you and I were talking a little bit about you know, the Medicare Advantage program, mm -hmm. if, if that is something a senior has, is the Medicare Advantage, there is some home care already built into that, many of those programs. So they should ask the question because sometimes that four hours a week that they might need really solves what you're talking about is the delivery, the service pieces, the, you know, you know, I'd like to get a new puzzle, but I don't, you know, I'm not comfortable online going get, great a caregiver can go shop for you know there's just whatever whatever need there is um there are you know programs coming up locally i can't specifically tell you which ones but i know that you know my church has risen to a level i never thought they would in the community mm -hmm. um the jewish community centers you know everybody's just pouring into this idea of how do we reach out to the folks that need help yeah. Um, and it's not just the seniors, it's everyone, but, you know, specifically, how do we continue to nourish our seniors, protect our seniors, and, you know, connect our seniors to the people and the loved ones that they need, um, whether that's, you know, companies lending or providing technology, um, or, you know, just, you know, connecting with strangers that soon become friends. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, we're, you know, we're all just slightly separated um, until we get to know each other. It, you know, it, it creates new bonds. And that's what we want to try to do is enable people to do that. Yeah. And I, and I would just like to add for um, the people watching this video that within your local community, I, I think one of the first places that I recommend people call if they are needing resources or looking for um, you know, ideas of what's out there in their community is to call your local area agency on aging. Um, yes. those, those offices have, they have all the things, they have all the information about all the different programs, whether it's senior housing, home care, um, you know, errand services, all, mm -hmm. all of those resources um, would live under that, um, that hub as far as getting information. Um, and Amy, to piggyback on that too, it goes back to, you know, don't be afraid to call a home care agency in your, in your area because mm -hmm. they know where the resources are as well. Yeah. You know, so you call the area, um, area on aging, agency on aging, and they can't, you know, no, they're, they're displaced too. They're working from home as well and they're busy and you can't seem to get through. Don't be afraid. Don't hesitate to pick up the phone you know, call Comfort Keepers or another agency in your area and ask the questions that you would ask them. Do you know of a meal delivery service? The answer is yes, we do. We'd be happy to connect you with that. Can you give me the phone number for Meals on Wheels? Absolutely, we'll help you do that. Can you get me connected to Catholic Services? Absolutely. We, are, we want to be a resource for you because, again, it, it doesn't – help can come from anywhere, and that's what we want to do is make sure that we're right here to help you in any need all the way up to being in your home to help you that way. So, 
Yeah, a great reminder again. Um, uh, can we go back to the, the Medicare Advantage plans? Sure. Um, it, are there waiting periods? Are there certain qualifications those recipients um, need to have in order to receive home care benefits, or is it unique to each um, plan? It's, it's really unique to each policy and plan. Uh, my recommendation is call your um, insurance agency that you're working through, whether it's Aetna, Blue Cross, or whomever your Advantage plan is through, and ask them the questions. You know, tell them what your need is and ask the questions of how do I take advantage of this in my plan. Um, and then what they'll do is they'll continue to connect. You know, they're connecting with you know, companies like ours on a regular basis because clients are surfacing that need the help. And so, you know, they're their clients and that's their role is to serve you as a senior if you have the plan. That's why you, you know, you got the plan. So again, don't be afraid to exercise your rights under Medicare Advantage by calling your provider and, and asking what does it cover and what can I do with this um, based on the needs that you have. Okay. Great advice. Thank you. Um, Chris, any, any final thoughts? Any closing arguments? <laughs> <laughs> Def definitely no arguments. Um, thank you for what you're doing, Amy. Um, I hope that, um, you know, this, this helps bring, you know, more hope to people. Mm. I hope that it brings hope. I, I really want you know, people to see this um, downturn or this time as an opportunity to connect in great ways. Um, we actually, uh, and I'm going to brag for a minute, if you don't mind, sure. on June 24th is the National Day of Joy. Hmm. Um, and it is a national holiday that we actually created and registered. So it, it you know, will end up on calendars. This is the second annual one. It's the fourth Wednesday of every June, um, but it's really an opportunity to remember and to remind people that, you know, being alive is a joy, but think about all the things that bring you joy and, you know, we, we'll be doing all kinds of virtual celebrations around the country and around the globe um, to, to celebrate, but that's something that really excites us every single year is to see what, you know, our franchisees and our company operations can do to you know, spread that joy. So we've seen franchisees send good, good humor ice cream trucks to facilities and all kinds of things just to remind people of you know, that being alive is such a great joy and, and we wanna share that with everybody. So. Well, great to know, I was not aware of that. So June 24th, we'll, we'll mark our calendars for sure. Um, Chris, thanks again for joining us and for sharing your message of hope, joy, and great resources um, as well with our audience. We really appreciate it. Um, and to those of you who are new to watching the Senior List uh, YouTube channel, feel free to subscribe so that you can be notified anytime we add new videos. And we'll see you again soon.